We got a little bit of an odd one today. And what we have here is a sealed power hypertectic piston for a small block Chevy 400 cubic inch engine, um, 30 over B406. And this is a shorter compression height piston for use with a 5.7 rod, which is a little bit longer than the factory rod. And you know, this is an engine we're gonna probably uh, see run up and down the road doing burnouts everywhere. That's what I'm assuming these kids are gonna do with it. So, you know, upon inspecting all the parts, I noticed that one piston out of the eight was missing the oiling hole for the wrist pin. Uh, it's drilled on the one side, but not on the other. And all the other pistons, they, they had both holes drilled. Now, there's quite a few pistons out there that are manufactured without that oiling hole. And in fact, we actually have two reliefs in the side here so oil can get in there. But just because I know these guys are gonna be just doing complete urban assault with this thing, I want that oil hole in there. So I gotta go in there and figure out how to get that oil hole in there. So first thing I gotta do is get a rough idea what this angle is and I'll take a transfer punch for that I have one here that fits in there quite well and I'll use my vernier angle gauge here and this tells me that it's roughly 44 degrees so that's a, a good base point so I guess I gotta come up with a way to uh, drill that hole on that angle. So I'm gonna use my horizontal boring machine for this because in my mind it seems like the easiest uh, setup. And I don't wanna get too complicated on this setup. I just need to drill this hole. It needs to be in mostly the right spot and close to the correct angle. It's actually not that critical. The hole just needs to be there. That's the important thing. So I got these T-slot stops and we're just gonna Stick these in, in right about here, and we can adjust them if we find they're in the wrong spot. I'm gonna grab this small angle plate, slide this up on here, and we can just bump this right up against them stops. And here's some hardware to get everything all clamped down. So we got our T-slot nuts. We'll just slide that in there like so. Put a little pressure on this, push this up against those stops, and I'll snug these up. There we go, that bad boy's mounted. Alright, so now, I need to find a way to clamp this to this plate. And that way there, this whole table, when it can turn, I can rotate to the angle I need. So, that's what I got in mind. Now, We'll just find a way to figure out how to get that mounted there nicely. Okay, I think I got a plan. So I got an old wrist pin from another small block Chevy. I got scrap bins full of these. So this side has the hole drilled in it already. I'm gonna stick that wrist pin into one side, grab a one, two, three block, and I think I'm going to put a clamp here, clamp this down, and then maybe put another clamp and just hold the piston up against this angle plate and then I can tilt this thing around as I needed. So I'm gonna find some hardware and get that thing mounted. Okay, that's what I got to start with. That uh, will keep the horizon correct. And with this table rotating, I'll be able to get the angle I need. And now I just want something to hold the piston to this angle plate. Okay, check this out. This is what I come up with. So, I got this wrist pin in the one half of the bore, clamp down to this one, two, three block. It's keeping the horizon pretty good. 
Uh, it's also putting pressure on keeping the piston from moving. And then just, you know, some square stock and a C-clamp. And that's pinching that against my angle plate pretty good. Uh, in this case, we're just drilling a tiny little hole in some aluminum. So this setup's going to work, I think. Now, down here on my table, I don't know if we can see this, but I got a degree wheel here. And on this face, we're actually set up at the zero, so that's nice. So we got to rotate this thing uh, 44 degrees, roughly, is kind of what I measured with that your gauge there. So, so we'll just uh, give this thing a push. And 360 minus 44 is 316. There we go. Again, I don't know if we can see that, but that's the 316 mark. lock that table so now what I'm gonna do I got another wrist pin here I'm gonna slide that into the bore I got an edge finder here and we're gonna get that spindle going we're gonna come and find the edge of this wrist pin right there this thing out of the way and I don't have any readouts or anything on this machine so some uh, Magby sticky back dials are what I tend to use set that at zero so now we'll just find the radius of this pin is usually a 927 and a half yes So, 464, we want to round up, and we'll just uh, rotate that up. 100, 200, 300, 464. But we got to also add the radius of our edge finder here too, which would be uh, 100 thou. So now we got to go 100 thou more than that to 564 and now we'll be in the exact center of that wrist pin bore so now we'll be in the center of that bore and it's time to change the tooling here We've got a 316 end mill we're going to use I think that's uh, going to reach far enough I'm going to let it hang way out of my collet here. And we just got to get this to line up where we need it. Feed it in a little more. And we would contact there. Let's uh, see how far in that is. I measured the other hole to be about an inch. so almost there pretty close we can get a little closer okay so that is really close to where we would be I think that's going to be close enough and now we'll uh, let's put this a little slower so it's not so noisy spin the lawn and I'm just going to hand feed the table in to see if we can uh, there we go all right so we'll just hand feed it in Let's see what that looks like. Well, almost a perfect spot base, just a little more. Oh, there we go.
here we go perfect I uh, can't see the see shit through here eh? sorry guys anyways we got a perfect spot face going on in there so let's uh let's get this bad boy moving out of the way can we see in there now Eh, not really you're gonna have to take my word for it now we'll just change this tool out Change the collet. We're gonna run this little, this little number drill here. This is the same diameter as that transfer punch I used. This collet just barely, just barely grabs that one. Sweet. And now we'll. Uh, Bring that closer in, just like that. We'll change my feeds here. This will put it to uh, that's five thou per revolution, like that. And turn our spindle on. There we go. And we're feeding. Cool. So basically, as long as there's chips coming out, I'll know I haven't broke through yet. And I think we did right there. So, turn that off. Come around the other side and see if we can see in there at all. Oh, look at that. Ah, this damn light here. How about there? I don't know, can you guys see that? That drill's just poked through there. I'm trying like right in the center of the screen there, she poked through. So, we know we've made it. You guys having fun yet? So, put the feet that way. It's a little, little tough with one hand. There we go. Oh, this damn light. Sorry, guys. I suck with this, don't I? Anyways, there we go. Okay, so I think we're done with the boring mill work now. So let's uh, get this thing unclamped. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, you probably won't be able to see it through the camera, but. There's the hole we just put in there. I don't know. You guys see that? Probably not. Okay, so we're not done yet now. There's a little bit of a burr in there, as there should be. I, I just drilled a hole. So we're going to take this over to the hone and just give this a little rub just to get that burr out of there. So I'm over at the small rod home, which is where I actually discovered this hole was missing. And it's how so is I like to take the accompanying wrist pin for these pistons. I like to measure them, set my gauge here, and I like to measure the actual oil clearance between the wrist pin and the pin bore. And I also do that on the connecting rods, whether or not they're press fit or a floating rod. If they're press fit, I just want to make sure there's enough press that that pin's not going to slide out in operation, give us all a headache. And for the floating wrist pins, like what this guy has here, I just want to make sure there's enough, piston, uh, enough oil clearance on that wrist pin to fit that, that bushing the way I want. So quite often these guys come with just enough clearance that the pin just fits in the hole. You know, maybe good for a daily driver, even then I, I got my limits and these are usually under them. 
Uh, and this is a performance engine that, you know, I'm assuming these kids are just going to be ripping the streets up burnout after burnout, which is, uh, hey guys, I'm in Langley, 199th Street, doing about part of my shop, man. I just love seeing that shit. Rip that street up. Most of the neighbors here don't care. They think it's cool too, so. That's how I noticed I was checking all my pistons, making sure the oil clearance is good, and then boom, there's a hole missing. I may have missed that. If uh, it wasn't for that, you never know. So, could have even been luck that we caught that. So first thing I like to do, I got a rough, rough cleaner here, and I just want to go in there and do my best. You, you can't get in the backside of this hole. I just want to do my best and make sure that I, I broke off whatever, whatever bits of crap I can from drilling that hole. And I can kind of see the backside of the hole here, and I, I think we got her. I think we got her covered. Next up, we'll uh, we'll take a measurement measurement on our pin, and with this measurement from our pin, we'll set the gauge. We'll set the gauge to that measurement. So there we go. We're at the zero. And then we can take piston or the rod, whatever we're measuring, and we can check our oil clearance. So I'm already at about six tenths on that side and five tenths on this side. So I'm aiming for so I'm aiming for anywhere between six and eight tenths. That'll be good for an engine like this. So we still have a little bit of material to move, remove, and when we remove that material will remove any burr that I made from that little bit of uh, machine work we did. So let's get this thing going. Okay, so pretty, pretty easy operation. Start. A little bit of oil. We'll just swipe that all over the mandrel here. So the mandrel, we got one right here. So here's your typical mandrel. And we got a couple of stones in here. And each mandrel kind of has a short range of diameters, like this one's for a 720 diameter, and this one's probably for a 920 or this one's 900, and it opens up to the uh, 9 inch, uh, 927 we need for this wrist pin. Down at the bottom, I got a foot pedal. When I push the pedal, we get this kind of going here, and uh, just give this a couple swipes here. like that. Come and check our work. So it's looking like I'm six and seven tenths on that bore. And five and six tenths on that bore. So that actually happens to be the bore we just uh, drilled on too. So we'll do a little more. We'll put a little more emphasis on this bore. Now we're at six and seven. Six and seven. And I'll just give one more full swipe to make sure that the alignment's good. It's a light swipe, and we won't see it in the camera, but it puts a beautiful little cross hatch in there. And it's a shame we don't get to see some of these, these marks we put because they're uh, really mesmerizing sometimes. And there we go, we got our seven and eight tenths. And that one's uh, seven tenths. So, so that's, uh, that's how I went about fixing that, I guess. And now we got the old hole in all of them. Whoop. And now we can go get this washed off and get that into our engine. All right, we'll just take this over here. Set that in there. Let's give that a few minutes. All right, that should do it. Ooh, hot and teamy.
All right, well, it's pretty clean. Ooh, it's hot. Hot. Now that's, uh, it's hot. Now that's not clean enough. Um, I didn't rinse it or anything, so we got soap stain on it, and that's an industrial washing machine, so, you know, it's kind of a, a little bit dirty. Coming this way, Sully. Excuse me. What are you looking at me like that for? And then, believe it or not, I just do my final wash of piston right here in my sink because uh, this is just the best clean I seem to find I can get. Getting them bores really good. And there we go. One nice clean piston. And you know what? I forgot to clean the wrist pin, so I gotta go clean that too now. So that was kind of fun, um, quite unusual. I gotta say, I don't believe I've actually ever had to do that operation before. But it's done now, let's go get this thing in that engine. Okay, so I'm over at the assembly area and I don't know, as you can see, it's uh, quite a busy area right now. Got a 289 short block I just assembled. Uh, this is a small block Chevy. It's going to be 383. Um, it's it's ready for assembly. Uh, I got all the bearing clearances checked. We got ourselves a 351 Windsor. This one's all honed, washed. It's ready for its assembly. And we got a Chrysler 426 wedge engine. Um, this is actually quite an impressive build we got going on here. And here's our our lowly 400 with uh, one hole missing here so now that we got that piston taken care of we can get that bad boy into that engine all right well let's get this thing uh, assembled here So, get some lube up on this wrist pin. The pin bore on the rod. And now the pin bore is on the piston. Right. We'll get one clip on one side in here. And then uh, connecting rod goes chamfer forward just like so. Oh, look at me go. That's the side with the pin clip. There we go. There we go. All right. So let's uh, just go double check that. Make sure we hung that right. Goes into this hole. Chamfer facing the radius on the crank. Front of the piston pointed to the front. We're good to go. Second clip in. It's a beauty. 
Making sure everything's seated in correctly. Piston moves nice. Everything's already been sized and fitted. It's just a matter of getting this one together and installed. So, what do we got here? So, it's going to go here. Right. That's our top ring. That's our second ring. Bevel down. Slide that in like so. And that'll go on that side. Alright, so we got our top ring, which is a molly ring. This is a non-directional one. So get that one on. There we go. That one goes this way. That goes there. Beauty. Got a little bit of lube in the bore. Coat that skirt really good. And I like to get lots of oil on these ring lamps. Alright, let's see if we can do this without any more interruptions. So, up. Chamfer down. Rings are correct. Slide that bad boy in. Beauty. Up nice. Perfect. A little bit of lube. Get that on the threads. And let it get a little bit under the shoulder here. Beauty. Make sure we got side movement. Oh, telephone's ringing. Oh my God. Hello? All right, well, that's it for our 406 short block here. Beauty, all machined, assembled, uh, cams degreed in already. Now I can uh, get out of the rest of the assembly for this. So, awesome. As soon as the guy shows up with the cylinder heads, I'll have some more work to do onto this. Until then, I got a whole, whole whack of assembly to do. So, uh, you guys have a good weekend, and I'll catch you later.